Hi, Greg. Hi, Olivia, and welcome to Miller. Thank you. We're going to take you through a factory tour, so let's go for a walk. All right. Thank you. Okay, Olivia, we're going to go down to the design and engineering area for okay. the first stop. We're going to talk to Michael Abelev. He's our design and engineering manager, okay. and he's one of the guys that's in charge of all the ideas and putting them into fruition to, to generate these new products. Great. All right, let's do it. Hi, Michael. Olivia, welcome. Thank you. So what are, where are we? You're at the heart of the Miller R&D HQ. Okay. This is where everything happens. We take concepts from our Miller cinematographers worldwide and we put it into reality. All right. So basically, once you get that customer feedback, which you guys are pretty good at doing, really listening to your customer and the people that are using the products the yeah. most, then you put it into practice here. That's right. So all we the prototypes kind of come to play That's in this right. area. That's right. We, we create uh, models in, in, the, in the current 3D sort of cyberspace. Uh -huh. uh, from those models, we actually make prototypes, mm -hmm. we put them together. This is what we call functional prototypes. They're not just things we sort of touch and feel. Uh, these are the things that people can use and see if it actually fits for purpose. Gotcha. So it's a very important step in trying to address those needs by our customers. You know. So from there, uh, we go through various approvals, feedbacks, um, and then put the product back into, into, into real life, put it on the shelf for people to start to use. Yeah. Nice. Now, when your customers are playing around with the prototypes, do you then take that feedback and fine tune and sort of precisely get exactly what the customer wants uh, absolutely. before it goes out into production? Absolutely. That's a very, very important step. Uh, it closes the loop mm -hmm. uh, of what the product may started off as yeah. and sometimes you do you do see wonderful changes in a product and, yeah. and and that's where the customers get maximum value out of Miller product. And I really enjoy that about the Miller philosophy if you will. You know, when Greg and I were walking through the factory, I noticed that you guys have plastered on the walls uh, the people who are using your product, where they're using it. So it looks like you guys take great pride in the fact that you have that personal relationship with your customer. Miller Sharpshooters is a, is, a, is a big part of Miller, um, what we do. Mm -hmm. um, and it creates a big buzz. I think what you're actually seeing is the buzz. Yeah. You know, uh, and when a new product hits the shelf, mm -hmm. uh, people are excited about it. The marketing people have something to do. The sales people have something to do. Yeah. The manufacturing people have something to so do. So it's a community space. Absolutely. And, right. and, and that's, what, that's what Miller is about. Great. Now, once uh, the prototype meets the Miller standard, uh, we're going to, I guess, now go through the development process. So we're going to be able to see the assembly line and how these things really are birthed and the magic of the R&D state to the final product. OK, so at this point, I guess I'll, you'll pass the torch on to Darren. Darren's the next stop. OK. Um, and uh, he'll run you through the manufacturing part of, of Miller. And um, thank you very much for stopping by. Hi there, Darren. Hi, Olivia. How are you going? I'm great. So where are we? We're in the manufacturing area of Miller Camera Support. Okay. Uh, welcome. Uh, this is uh, where the raw material comes in, and we uh, allocate machine time, and we get the, the product on. The first components that come off the machine, we take them in and do a, a QA process on them. OK, so do you want to take me there? Yeah, let's go. So explain to me what we're going to be looking at here. We're looking at uh, um, uh, the process of uh, ensuring the quality of the product. Uh, we have a, a lovely uh, computerized machine which is called a CMM. Okay. Which we try and uh, we ensure that we put most of our product through. So this is the CMM. This is a CMM. All right. Explain to me what this machine does and what it's doing right now. This machine is is all about. Um, we program it with uh, the drawings that the engineers have developed okay. from all the prototyping right through to production. Uh, we, we look at all the tolerances that are involved and uh, we create a program for this machine uh, to, to provide a report based on what we see on the drawings from the engineers. Gotcha. So this is where all of the precision work happens and... The, the closed loop of, of quality. 
Gotcha. So we, we're looking at what the engineers design. Mm -hmm. we, we go out and manufacture it with many tools mm -hmm. and uh, different machine tools. And then we come back in here and this machine uh, gives us a report based on the engineer's design. Gotcha. So everything's going to be uniform after it passes this test. Yes, uh, from, from batch to batch. So yeah. you, everybody talks about batch to batch of their product mm -hmm. and showing from batch to batch we get it right. Gotcha. And that's where the tolerance that you were talking about comes into play. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. All right. Now, after everything passes all of the stringent testing here, <laughs> where do we go now? We uh, this, this is obviously a raw material. In a raw material right. state, it needs to be metal finished and powder coated. Okay. With a quality powder coating. So we're going to go see where that happens? Yeah, let's okay. go. Okay. All right. Okay, Darren. So where are we? We're in the metal finishing area okay. of Miller. Um, we're just seeing the fellows uh, finishing off the, filing the uh, main bodies that we saw upstairs. We were QAing those. So this is where metal finishing happens and, uh, and the hand finishing happens. So, I mean, is it like every single piece of metal that comes out of the manufacturing plant now is touched by hand, hand finished, Yep. before it goes into the metal coat, or the is, powder yep. coating. Yep, it is. We, we have other uh, machines that do help us to rumble and, and really finesse uh, the edges, but primarily the sharp edges, we don't want our uh, end users cutting their, their hands. Yeah. And we want a qual quality finish, and right. this is what we have to do. It, you can see it's a robust aluminium casting that, you know, that does come out of the mold uh, quite sharp, and we have to go through the metal finishing process. Okay, great. So now powder coating. Powder coating, All through right. this way. So we've seen the, the raw materials getting finished off uh, with the filing or have you. Right. Then we uh, clean them. They get, um, they get a sealant on them. And then the next thing is uh, we then put them through a powder coating process. Great, so they're hung up and yeah. powder coated. And then here's a drying rack it looks like. Uh, two things. One, this is to go in the oven here for the curing. Gotcha. So it's a static electricity uh, process. And then uh, we hang them here for going into the, the oven. It goes in at uh, temperature and comes out after a period of time. Gotcha. And then what are we looking at as a final? So the, the, this is the this is a powder coated product here and this is the, the final product here. Baked, wow. ready to go. So it's baked, shined up, and now what's the next process? Next process is to go into the uh, assembly, assembly area. So Darren, we're really kind of coming to the end of the process here. It's assembly and packaging, essentially, yeah, right? Yeah, that's it, yep. Okay, so uh, we have Miller members putting everything together. And are there any other checks and balances before everything goes out? Uh, no, the next thing is to, to put them into kits for assembly and uh, it, basically allocate the, the resources to put them together and uh, and, uh, and away they go. Yeah, that's it. And then into the customer's hands. Jerry's um, uh, has a, the task of putting the, the DS product together. Uh, he's, um, he's been with Miller for up to seven years and he's got the technical knowledge for, for putting the, the high quality parts that we've made in the, the uh, manufacturing area uh, together for us. We looked at the main body. The main body is in that component there uh, that we've seen in the, the QA process. And he's putting the, the corresponding pan onto the, the main body. We're ah. talking, talking the product up. We're, we've got exacting standards as to how uh, the product is finally assembled. So it doesn't fail in the, in the field. Gotcha. Now with this one, uh, are these movable discs inside? Are they? Can you explain? exactly how the fluidity works. Have you got two days? No. I know. Right? Give, give us the Reader's <laughs> Digest version of this. Because it's, it, it's quite interesting. I think when people hear fluid cartridge or fluid head, they don't know, is this a grease? Is it friction? Are the metal pieces actually touching? What's the viscosity factor? Can you give us a shorthand explanation of that, maybe? It, it, it's, a, it's a series of plates that we put together. And yes, there is a grease applica application through those. Uh, they, they rotate um, through each other and, and that's where we get the, the drag sensation. Gotcha. Okay, uh, it's, a, it's a high quality, it's, it's very um, uh, sealed mm -hmm. in that area so we, we don't lose uh, that drag over, over the short period of time and they, they sustain for a long period of time. And there's no grease leakage? No grease leakage uh, and, and that's minimal over a long period of time. Yeah, excellent.
It's a tried and tried and tested process. We we QA all these uh, all of our product for um, you know the the standardised um, uh, process of, of grease application, uh, the way we assemble them, uh, the way the product goes together. There, there's a in in the finishing component of the fluid head, we we actually put it through the stringent test of, of rotation and ensuring that each product feels the same. So every time you buy uh, multiple products, if, if you bought one a year ago and you love it, you bought it, bought another one, you expect that, that to function exactly the same way. Same as what we're talking about our QA process. It's right. about what we've done in history, how to repeat that mm -hmm. time and time again and provide that quality to the, the end user. Gotcha. We also manufacture and, and assemble our tripods uh, on site. Uh, we come to the the, uh, the packaging area. We have uh, uh, you, you put your order in uh, as an end user. You put your order in. Uh, it frantically makes its way down here, or, or <laughs> quietly makes its way down here. Uh, it, we we pack big orders down to the singular um, product orders in this area here. Uh, we have for export. We have uh, large cartons, which are double uh, skin uh, cardboard, and you can see also we we shrink wrap the the product to make sure that nothing goes wrong. We don't want our product to be punctured, uh, squashed, crushed in the, in the transportation quality process. Quality control, quality control, quality control. We had Lloyds of London come because we were sending off to um, uh, United Emirates, somewhere in that area, and Lloyds came through and said, who has set up your <laughs> export uh, process? Because, because it was just so fault, sealed. Know? We're about to ensure this, this, uh, this yeah. shipment and, and faultless. So. That's great. Good news. Okay, so I guess from here we go into the showroom. I'm going to say goodbye to you now, Darren. Yeah, I'll meet back so up with my buddy Greg and bring this story full circle. Thank you. All right, thank you. Hi, Greg. Hi, Olivia, and welcome back. How yeah. was the tour? The tour was amazing. I got to see everything from start to finish, and this is really the actual finish. This is it. This is the final protocol for all the products. They're all on display here. And uh, well, I understand that you actually saw the uh, DS range there being put together I and designed. Did. And I did, so this is the uh, DS ready to order. That's it, yep, that's great. Okay, so tell us a little bit about this line that we're looking at. So this line here was, is developed uh, specifically for the smaller cameras, mm -hmm. uh, maybe uh, smaller DSLRs or handy cams, that sort of thing. Gotcha. They are a fixed drag system, mm -hmm. but they do have quite a bit of functionality in them. Okay. Uh, Maybe a step up would be the compass range right behind us here. This is where we introduce selectability for, for drag and also multiple selections of counterbalance, really designed for larger cameras, right. larger DSLRs with bigger rigs, that sort of thing. Okay. The next stop would be the arrow range just All here right. in the corner. Okay. Our main uh, draw card for broadcast networks across the world. We've got about 216 broadcast networks that use this product or have used this product. Nice. That's so been very successful for us. Uh, and the last port of call here is the Skyline, Skyline. 70. Skyline. These are the big boys. That's the big boys. So that's a 150 mil. Okay. It's about a 75 pound capable fluid head. Wow. I'll call that 38 kilos. Yeah, nice. So, and just on right. the other side of that is a range of tripods. Of course, we've got some uh, single stage, two stage, All right. uh, mini, the, mini tripod. High hat there. style, yeah. yeah. And um, something on wheels. Yep, we call that a pedestal, more in line for, for uh, using in studios. Gotcha, so. so we can wheel that around and it, it can go mobile. It can. Nice. So. Greg, thank you so much. Thank you, Olivia. All right, I'll be back. <laughs> All right, now if you guys have any questions on any of the Miller tripods that you've seen today or you want to find them, you can check out millertripods.com. And of course, you can go to dragonimage.com.au for all of your Miller needs.